Today we're going to look at a masonry wall design and we're going to split up into two parts. Today we're going to look at moment resistance uh, independent of wall height and then uh, tomorrow we'll add the P-delta effects associated with uh, slender, slenderness in a wall. So for now we'll concentrate just on just like I said just a moment resistance. Uh, so we got uh, 15 M's at 1200 on centers. These are the grouted cores these are void cores, hollow cores in here. So every core is 200, 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200. So we have uh, a 15 amp bar at, at every grouted core. And uh, one 15 amp has an area of steel of uh, 200 millimeters squared. So uh, let's also assume that the, the wall height is 4,800 uh, high, but we're only going to, you know, just look at the slenderness ratio to make sure we're, th we're within the uh, the range. So height over thickness is uh, 4,800 over the thickness of the wall, which is 190 wall. Forty-eight hundred over one ninety is uh, twenty-five point three, so that's good. We're under the limit of thirty. If it's over thirty, then there's a special method for uh, walls that are very slender. But we're still in the range where we need to look at p delta effects, which we'll look at tomorrow. But uh, we're we're not so slender a wall that we have to look at uh, a very extreme case of slender walls. Um, now the thing we also want to look at because the the rebar is faced is spaced so far the far apart, we have to take a uh, be a uh, be effective width for the flange. Not the whole flange isn't effective because the cores are too far apart. So the core the the code says uh be effective is to be limited to four times the thickness of the wall, which is four times one ninety for this case, for a one ninety wall. So Four times 190 is 760. Now we also want to work in uh, per meter on a per meter basis. So let's uh, take the 760 millimeters, which is effective per core. Each core has an effective width of 760 flange available, but on a per meter basis, that would be 760 over the spacing, right? 1.2 meters. So 760 divided by 1.2, 633. So 633 millimeters per meter. And we could do the same thing with area of steel. The area of steel is 200 millimeters squared per 1.2 meters. And then we could work effectively in, in on a per meter basis. So 167 millimeters squared per meter. Um, and the next thing we would do is uh, basically to look at the stress block and uh, and uh, use statics for summing forces. So we have an external force. We're going to say that the the axial load on this uh, wall is say has a P factored of 11,000 newtons. That's the acting factored load. So P factored has to equal the force in the uh, masonry minus the force in the steel, right? There's a force, there's a P factored acting this way. There's this, and then there's a force in the masonry this way, and there's a force in the steel acting that way force in the steel, force in the masonry, and the axial is that way. So P is equal to FM minus FS. And uh, FM is the stress block. So phi of the mortar X 0 0.85 F prime M times B effective times the uh, height of the stress block A. <coughs> A is an unknown in this case, and then we would uh, the force find the force in the steel, which is minus uh, 
Phi of the steel, area of the steel, F yield. So we can uh, solve for A now based on on this equation just, uh, of, of statics, or this equation of statics. So the factored lo uh, axial load is 1100. That's acting on the section. And then phi m is 0 0.6. x is 1 because uh, the stresses are perpendicular to the uh, bed joint. For lintels, x was 0 0.5 in the, in the previous uh, tutorial set. But in, when we're going uh, with a vertical spanning wall, the code uh, n notes that it's, it's actually stronger uh, when it spans vertically than it does uh, horizontally. So that's why we have the 1 times 0 0.5 times F prime M 9.8 be effective 633 times A, which is an unknown. 0 0.85 area steel is 167 and the F yield of the bar of the rebar is 400 MPA so now we can uh, solve for A and check to see if it's in the uh, in the face shell let me work that out and A comes out to 21.4 millimeters, which is less than 36 millimeters, so the assumption of using an F'm of 9.8 is correct. If, if, the, uh, if the neutral axis fell below the thickness of the flange, then we'd have to use some kind of averaged F'm of hollow to uh, grouted core, but because uh, it's, a, it's not the case, we can use just a hollow F'm value. Uh, the moment resistance is going to be the force in the masonry times the lever arm between here and here. So, because if we take moments about here, for example, we can take this distance here, half of 190, minus half of A over 2 to give us the lever arm. So, uh, it's the thickness of the block over 2 minus. A over 2. And the force in the mortar is, uh, or force in the masonry is, is this here. It's going to be 0 0.6 times 1 times 0 0.85 times 9.8 times 633 times A, 21.4. And then T over 2 is 190 over 2 minus A over 2, which was just soft 21.4 over 2. So let me work that out. Moment resistance is about uh, 5.7 kilonewton meters. So tomorrow we'll uh, carry on and, and then uh, find out what the amplifications are due to P-delta effects and then we'll use that amplification fa factor to, to, to amplify the, uh, the factored moments and come up with a, a, a moment total for the section.